Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, the devil wears tingle tights. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with ya. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going so great. I am so excited for today's episode. Because we are also joined by our good friend, producer, performer, comedian, Matt Acevedo is here. How you doing, Matt? I am so happy to be here. We had the best day. The best It really day. was. We've had a really good day. We have immersed ourselves in The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes for the Nintendo 3DS, which will be what we're talking about today. Um, a little oh, look. It doesn't mean that we're like traveling back in time, like six years to 2015. Yeah. Sure, but I think that's okay. I've been wanting to do it forever. Yeah, like has anyone ever actually beat that game? So you know, Ooh, I mean, what a great question. Yeah, I actually want to know if people actually beat that game because I don't know anyone who's beaten it yet. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. No, we won't. We'll see. <laughs> If you've beaten the game, write into us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com and let us know. Um, but also, maybe listen to the rest of the episode, find out what we thought about it, because uh, we didn't get uh, all the way through the game. Um, but speaking of things that we don't super know all that well, my copy of Sonic Forces. Would you like to borrow it for the Nintendo Switch? You can, or at least you can get on the list to borrow it if you want. All you got to do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com gmail and give us a mailing address where we can send you. My copy of Sonic Forces. Look out! My copy of Untitled Goose Game may be in there instead. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. It's just something that happens. You have to expect a little goose in your life from time to time. And here's yet another thing that we probably don't know all that much about. You can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or what? wherever you get Wait, okay, your well, podcast. <laughs> what don't we know about this? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I mean, I guess we don't 100% know for mm. sure how it affects us. Like, sure. we think strongly that it is that it helps people find the show. Yes. But it's all like an, a secret sauce. So I can't say with 100% confidence sure. that that's what this does. So we need to go down to Apple uh -huh. headquarters. Yeah. Uh, take the tour. Uh-huh. And then when we get to the part where they're like, here's where we keep the reviews, uh, then we go in and we look at the back end and see if it makes our show more visible. Yeah, exactly. But until we do that, we're relying on you, dear listener, to leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Um, we appreciate it a lot. We, we, it helps people find the show, we think. And um, yeah, and again, if you know, we'll give you a shout out on the show. If you rate us somewhere that's not the U.S. Apple Podcast Store, let us know. Send us a Twitter DM. Send us an email. And we'll give you a shout out. We'd love to shout out your name. Uh, and then the last thing that we need from you, October is Game & Watch Month. And Mark and I, we know a little bit about Game & Watch. This is actually a thing that we know very little about, <laughs> but is relevant to the episode. Um, uh, all, all of October, we're talking about the, the Game & Watch, the hardware, the software, uh, but we would like a little bit of direction. We want to know what you're interested in, so email us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Yes. <laughs> I stumbled over the dot com. In any event, uh, let's get through Game & Watch Month together. It's going to be great. Gentlemen, are you ready to get into it and discuss The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes? Yeah. I am dressed to the nines. So as discussed, the game came out 2015. Where were... Where, Matt, where were you in your Zelda handheld journey at this point? Where did you pick this game up when it first came out? I did pick it up, and I was—I had just graduated college, and I was still living in San Diego at the time. I was like getting ready to move back to LA, but I was still living out there. And uh, I had a friend who had it, so I had one person to play it with. But we—we, we, I think we—we we tried to. We found. I think someone in my acapella group uh, had it too. So I, I didn't play it much with them, but like sometimes when I did party up, it would be with like three people those would be josh my friend magnacio so so were, were you playing it uh like in a the same physical space as them or were you doing the online play uh we did it a couple times in person but 
for the most part, I just did online play, and it was really frustrating. Really yeah. Really frustrating. Yeah. So that was kind of my the latter half of that the uh, the online experience was sort of my experience of it um because i got it i was living in la um and i mean i guess mark you and i would have been friends i don't yeah, know why at this point although it may have been this would there was like a little there's a small period where like we weren't uh spending a ton of time together yeah. this may have been during that um but yeah i didn't have like a group really to play with um and even you know this has been something that's been on our list of like things to do together for a long time yeah. um and it turns out it's just kind of tricky to be like, hey, two other grown men with jobs and responsibilities, like, come spend all day with me and play a, a multiplayer video game. Yeah. But worth it when you can make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't pick up this game until we were getting ready to play it. And it was for that exact same reason where it was like, it felt like an exercise in futility a little bit. Because it's like, man, this is one of those multiplayer games that I think would be a ton of fun but I don't know how I would ever manage to like actually play it with people. And mm -hmm. so I just assumed that I would never play it, but I'm really glad we did. Well, and cause like it necessitates, there are ways to play the game single player and there are ways to play the game uh, with randos and further, there are ways to play with people who aren't in the same room as you, but it's all, I don't know for, for my money, this game required so much like, actual in the room communication yeah and uh, just to get the, the room together a coordination right yeah like, it take a lot of planning uh, to do it well because i remember i got fed up and i would try to go ahead and play online and i right. i you saw today i only got to world like four which is the ice world and gave up uh because i just got so frustrated about it. i was at a point where it's like i just want to beat this game and yeah i got as far as i could and then i retired it which well, is such a bummer <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i i feel like uh when we were playing it matt you brought up the a comparison to Overcooked. And yeah. I really felt that where it's like, could you play Overcooked online? Like, I guess maybe, but <laughs> it wouldn't, but it wouldn't be like the same sort of fun. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, so much of this is the game you like the sort of mental game you play in the room, uh, like supporting your friends and or uh, letting your friends down. <laughs> <laughs> and the game lets you know, which I love. It's like, it tells every action. Like when you kill something, it's like, like, Oh, Matt's, killed this thing or when you when you die it's like oh like matt lost one of your hearts uh -huh. yeah because you share hearts yeah. which is a, such so interesting right or sometimes it'll be like uh mark collected 50 rupees and you're like oh well i needed 50 <laughs> rupees <laughs> that that is so um maybe we should maybe just lay the groundwork for what triforce heroes is absolutely yeah, yeah. um because again it's a game from six years ago so like it's not uh probably not commonly known or like in the on the top of the zeitgeist at the moment um but it is a three-player multiplayer zelda game uh like old, old, kind of uh old, old school top-down zelda um made what appears to be in the engine of a link between worlds on the 3ds uh, and the structure of the game is that you are or the premise anyway is that you are retrieving the outfit of the <laughs> princess styla styla, styla, yeah. styla um and so you venture out into the land with two other link clones basically <laughs> um and you encounter these dungeons that are like four they're like four rooms and like a room can be bigger than a single room but like uh four individual encounters and you just uh like kind of plow through them together and the game is very uh Progress is contingent on you using the individual abilities of each player in concert with each other to solve puzzles and fight enemies. Yeah, and kind of like the one thing that sets this apart from any other Zelda game is the setting and the costume mechanic. Yeah, uh, but also the, like, I know there is multiplayer in a handful of other ones, but, like, the multiplayer component is, is very different. Sort of like the mission-based structure um, yeah. where you're, like, you're selecting where you're going from a menu. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it yeah. encourages you to like go back and replay to get better and different loot. Yeah. So that way you can craft more gear, which in this game is costumes. Like it, right. it, it is that sort of like um, Diablo or Destiny type game loop, but in a Nintendo framework. Yeah. So it's very, yeah. Because you're never crafting a new weapon or some of the costumes are armor, I guess, but that's not. You don't think of them as yeah as armor and nothing. There's in kind of classic Zelda fashion, there are no stats, right? Um, so uh, an outfit will like actually tangibly change your abilities and not just like change the numbers on them. Um, like there's uh there's 
uh, an item that makes a pillar of water appear. And if you're wearing the torrent robe, um, it makes that pillar of water wider. Um, so like it's those sorts of things where if you are matched up the right item in the right costume, you are, it's like a, a huge amplifier. You're just like that much more effective yeah. in the level. And as you said, Patrick too, is that, you know, this game has a bunch of uh, challenges as well. Like mm -hmm. it's, the replayability is pretty, pretty great. It's actually, if you were to hundred percent, I would say to like beat the game, it'd probably take you like 10 hours, but to hundred yeah. percent, it, it's going to take you probably like 24 maybe if you're good uh but all those all those upgrades are goes they go to help beat those challenges yeah yeah well and i think you would also probably have to sink a lot of time in to buy everything yeah um because you know b between the individual like missions that the game deploys you on um you can shop for ingredients and you can shop for do they call them ingredients what do they call them it's probably just material. Materials, materials yeah. Because we're sewing clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and then the actual outfits themselves, which you need both rupees and um, the materials. But it seems like the economy of the game is uh, not bad necessarily, but it, it wants you to take your, your time, It right? forces you to, yeah. right? Because yeah. like, rupees are hard to come by, especially because life are, is shared between your teammates but rupees are collected individually, so someone yeah. could potentially come out with a lot more rupees than everybody else. That's why when it's flashing across the screen that it's like, oh, Mark got 50 rupees, that you could feel a little upset because you're like, well, I need 50 rupees, so I'm trying to get these tingle tights. That's I right. honestly did. Man, I didn't realize that we weren't sharing it. <laughs> so I was just kind of like going fast because we were going through as fast as we could. I was just trying to unlock every chest I saw. So yeah, apologies yeah. for robbing you guys. <laughs> no, 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 because no, it, it meant that sometimes you were also just like tossing one of us up there as yeah. fast as possible, and then we would open chests. That's true. Um, so like I, I and I think that probably is the way to play this game is to just. So yeah, like may, maybe there is a world where you can like play the game and be like the selfish jerk and just like try to mainline all the rupees and get them all yourself. But I feel like it's the game requires so much cooperation yeah. that like any griefing or trolling that you can do is too effective. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, uh, I feel like it's well balanced when you're playing among friends. I think playing online and that kind of stuff, it could be really annoying. But when you're playing amongst friends, it's the same sort of thing as like new super Mario brothers to me where it's like, yes, occasionally someone throws you off the edge and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But so, but for the most part, everybody's playing cooperatively. And so it threads that needle really well where it's like, yes, occasionally you don't get the rupees that you wanted, but you know, but like there's enough cooperation in there. That's just like forced that it never yeah. becomes like an issue. Yeah. I, the communication in this game it, it is so crucial. And uh, for those who haven't played it, the, there is communication with people in game. It's, it's via em, em, um, emotes, basically, of mm -hmm. like Link being like, use an item or, or come over, over here, here and stuff like, you know, very basic generic stuff, which, you know, are effective in, in, the, in the same room together. But like when that's the only line of communication you have online with people, yeah, it is infuriating. Because some yeah. of these are, these are, this is not an easy game. This is a difficult Zelda game. Yeah. And there's a, frustrating difficulty spike in the third world i would say yeah um the and that you that it definitely comes back down from like we so we we played all the way through the first five of eight worlds um and worlds one and two i feel like we were cruising we were having fun world three the like lava level the volcano we were like nah it got tough yeah right uh and we never, I guess we never failed out, right? Right. We never failed out, yeah. We, we would die, but we would have fairies to bring us back. We never totally failed out. Um, but I th well, actually, we probably came the closest in the fifth, in the fifth world. Definitely. I mean, definitely in the fifth. Yeah. We never got, we didn't even know we could go lower than one. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's then right. we're like, oh, that's it. It's like, oh, we have zero fairies. We still are, we're still alive. Okay. So maybe less a thing of actual difficulty and more a thing of like perceived difficulty or sort of like the annoyance slash frustration of like playing with, because look, anytime we ship, we sh the characters share health, right? So you've got like nine hearts or something between you. Um, and basically every time you get hit, you lose a heart. If there's fire involved, then Link is going to start running. He's going to fall into lava. He's going to take another heart. So, like, if we're on a tiny platform and we get hit with a fireball, all three of us lose a heart. All three of us run off the platform into the lava. 
and then we've lost six hearts and we die. Like, yeah, the the stakes seem so much higher. Yeah, um, and not in a fun way, but just in a like I don't want to screw this up kind of way. Yeah, especially the minecart portion of the fire level. It's like you know when I think minecart. I would think DK, but now it's like, no, DK is a piece of cake compared to what we had to do in this game. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, that was brutal with, we were with, because they were stacking the bombs. It was like, you're being, there are Hinoxes throwing bombs at you on minecarts, and you're all, you're sharing one minecart with your two other buddies and you're just defending yeah, these bombs to get off. And they, if they all blow up at once, it's like, oh, it's that's a it. lot of it damage. Hard. That's like, it that's hard. it. And you have to worry about you're picking up the bombs to throw them back, and you, all you want to do is not pick up your friend and accidentally yeah. throw them. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing that's fun is that, like, every level that you go into, it tells you what weapons you're going yeah. to have, like, what special mm -hmm. weapons. And there's three special weapons in each one, one for each character. But they might all be the same. Sometimes it's two of one, one of a different one. And that just adds to the chaos. Because, you know, okay, you're on this little mine cart and, you know, everybody has different abilities. And so it's just, uh, it gets really chaotic when everybody's trying to, like, deploy their ability or not deploy their ability, get out of the way, whatever it is. Yeah, and, like, you have to, like, it, it's fun to have to keep the mental inventory of, like, what items you have access to and therefore what abilities your party has access to. Um, I think we encountered all eight of the items in Triforce yeah. Heroes. Um, but so they are bombs, which function the way that you think they would. Um, boomerangs, which again, sort of the way you think they would. Except oh, yeah, boomerangs can be used to pick up other players, yeah. which is an important mechanic when there's like chasms that you have to get across. And so being able to throw a boomerang and then having that grab somebody mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, and then there is the bow, which is just a bow and arrow. There are the fire gloves, which kind of turn. It's Those kind of fun. like, yeah, they're fun. And it's like uh, grabbing a super flower in Mario Brothers, right? It literally makes that noise of the yeah, super flower. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> um, there's the grip shot that is like a, a hook shot. Um, and again, this has a fun like interaction with other players where you can like grab them and then you like zip over to them, which is super cool. Um, there's the gust jar. Which is like the uh, uh, the the same item in Minish Cap and Skyward, Skyward Sword. Sword, yeah. Um, where you're just like, and another like fun uh, other player interaction where you can like blast someone across a chasm. Um, the magic hammer, uh, which is just a big flattening hammer, fight turtles with it, etc. And then the water rod, like I mentioned earlier, which uh, makes a big like uh, column of water yeah. arise, uh, sort of acting as like a, another platform or lets you run over uh, areas that are. Uh, yeah. you know, and stuns, otherwise uh, stuns creatures if they're yes. in the water. Or yes. Yeah. Um, and like on top of that, there are costumes that correspond with each of these items to change the characteristics or the like the ability of the item. Um, I, you know, I already mentioned the the torrent robe, but we used the uh, the Kokiri uh, outfit a lot, yeah. which changes your abilities with the bow and arrow, where instead of firing one arrow in a straight line, it fires like three in like a little bit of a spread. Um, what uh. What what did you guys think of the like the costume abilities and like how they changed um like the the gameplay? I thought that it was it was really fun personally. I think that it's a it's because I I like that we were kind of able to plan ahead too. Like I like that oh if we're gonna like like for example it was kind of hard to come across resources to get the upgrades to uh costumes. So I would get items faster than like you know P Patrick or Mark would. So. I would able I was able to unlock the like Kokiri like thing for example before them. So then it's like oh we need there's one bow and arrow and let me have the bow and arrow since I have that ability that lets me fire three. So I thought that was a really cool um like like strategy and a great way to implement like upgrading your weapons without actually you know without just finding them just like I it was, yeah. it was an interesting take that I, I don't think I've seen in a Zelda game. It was kind of it felt like. It kind of reminded me when you're like gearing up in like League of Legends or something, or or I don't know. Something. No, totally, totally, and that's what I that's what I loved about it. It's just like another like layer of strategy yeah. when you know you're selecting the level and you're selecting um your costume and you get to see what the items are, and so just having the quick discussion amongst ourselves where it's be like, okay, like I'm gonna wear the legendary dress because that way we'll have more hearts and like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was just like it was just added another layer. Like you're saying of fun. Yeah. Yeah, and then, th I mean, there's also just, like, the fun of, like, wearing a goofy costume, totally. right? Totally. Like, um, there, there's a, a specific item that you, a uh, material that you need to craft the tingle tights, um, 
and Mark got it in one of our uh, runs through, <laughs> and it was another. I, I I promise I'm not always just jealous of Mark, but I was jealous of Mark. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty jealous. I was losing one item, yeah, <laughs> one material. I was like, no, <laughs> no. Um, but like, so the 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 tingle tights have the okay ability of pr- uh, protecting you from taking fall damage three times. Yeah. Um, but has the great ability of making you look like tingle while you play. <laughs> yeah, it was worth it. Well, and then like the uh, the legendary uh, gown or whatever it was called that I was talking about earlier. It's just like the Zelda's dress that you imagine from like Smash Brothers or um, yeah. Ocarina of Time or something like that. And I mean, probably from A Link Between Worlds. Like it's probably, oh, yeah, probably yeah. exactly the same model. Probably. But yeah, it's just, it's fun that they give Link the freedom to wear like in any outfit in the game. And the outfits, it, it's, this world itself is just so, It's I think it's the funniest Zelda game I've ever played. Yeah, like, sure. Like, the, the people of Hytopia I, uh, yeah. are hilarious. Like, I didn't notice this. I've played it before, but I always talk to this. There's a guy in the plaza in the main hub uh, where you can purchase and, you know, upgrade your clothes and stuff. And there's a guy that I always talk to facing, like, I was facing, um, like, right, uh, south of him. So I'm always, fa- like, he's always facing, like, down but he's like oh that guy's like half naked i'm like what are you talking about and i talked to him from the north side he turns around and this dude's half naked and he's, and he's what was he called the bearded man or something but he's the bearded something or other yeah yeah because in hytopia like fashion is the thing yeah and it has this really fun like french stereotypical like french veneer yeah, yeah so yeah. It, you know like uh uh like really like um v- versailles and like sun king-esque clothing yeah. and like everybody all the dialogue is with this like faux french accent <laughs> yeah. like it's just it's it's very uh yeah it's it's totally different from the other overworlds in zelda well and i think like that's good right because yeah. the game is so like the reality of the game is a goof yeah. um and like that sort of makes uh like playing it or getting frustrated with it like kind of like good and fine you know like it's there's no um well the experience itself can be very stressful um it's mostly just because like you're shouting and having a fun time right yeah like there's there's something uh knowingly frivolous about the premise of the game that just feels very fun yeah yeah and this you know this game it's made by gresco and gresco is the same people who did metopia so and if you like the humor of metopia oh. it's so reminiscent mm. of metopia it's crazy how like similar it is it's just like like so sarcastic and and even uh, Link's responses uh-huh. are so so mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like dialogue options for you to like respond to people. And uh, yeah, Link has quite a bit of attitude. Yeah, uh, which is funny because like, you know, he's not saying anything, right? Right. <laughs> he can't. He can't say anything. He's silent. Although, are you Link? This is a great question. Is that yeah. what you were gonna say? No, no. What I was gonna say is uh, just like on the topic of audio. One thing we weren't sure before we be- we began was like, oh, yeah. what was the audio going to be like from three different 3DSs all playing at the same time? Like, was it going to be chaotic? But no, it's actually kind of magical. Yeah, yeah, it, it's sort of like super stereo surround sound experience of just the audio blaring out of three different 3DSs, um, perfectly in sync. Yeah, in yeah. a way that was almost uh, disarming. How how in sync it was right it really was i thought there'd be a lag or delay or something but it was literally like like it was just we were all in one stereo it was crazy yeah well what's interesting is and you know for for the most part the game was performed really well right yeah it did um there there were only a couple times where we we would get sort of like stuttering um or what appeared to be lag um but we all experienced it at the exact same time yeah so like whatever whichever one of our switch or switches uh, 3ds's was like acting as like the hub um was like sending out the information to everyone exactly the same um which has got to be like the key to it right is that we're all really playing off of the one system and the other two are just acting as like controllers and displays for it yeah probably especially because we were doing like local play yeah and i think there is the download play option right so theoretically one person could own the game and other people could play it yeah i don't know how much i don't know how much of the game you can play that Uh, way yeah i'm not sure yeah you know we talked about earlier like the uh the difficulty spike from going from the first two worlds to the third world but i actually felt and it was like a little bit frustrating but i think the game in general is incredibly well balanced because you know like um 
we play a lot of video games and we would oftentimes butt up right against failure right but we never but it, we never tipped we never like completely wiped out but even if we had it wouldn't have been the end of the world but it was like balanced well enough where you had that challenge and it became like heightened where we were all sitting up and you know like uh, right. sitting oh, up in our yeah. chairs yeah. and we were yeah. like yeah because it had that like sense of like oh like we have to really buckle down to do that and i think that made it way more fun than if we were just able to skate through the whole thing yeah well and also i mean we we said that we never uh wiped out we did twice um, it's just while we were engaging in like the challenge mode of oh, like, oh, that's right. That's right. when Forgot we were trying to that. do it under, under the time limit. Oh yeah. We should talk about the challenge mode. Yeah. Go for it. So, um, after you complete a level or maybe even before, no, be- I think, I think you need to beat it first Cause basically or someone does. Yeah. Someone needs to beat it first. Cause basically when you select a level, um, everybody gets a vote on which world and which level you want to do. Um, so if everybody has the same amount of progress, then it's easy. But like, since I was playing the game for the first time, I didn't have access to all the worlds that you guys did. So we had to start at the beginning until I started catching up. But you always kind of like, I, I was thinking of this as like strikes in Destiny, where it's like, you always have the opportunity to go back and redo something to try to get different loot. And yeah. in order to improve your chances of getting like more rare material to make new costumes, you can add extra challenge um, to it. And everybody gets a vote on which challenge you want to do. And then usually it's like, uh, if everybody agrees, then obviously it just chooses that one. But if not, then it seems like it like cycles through, you know, just randomly selects yeah. which one it's going to do. Roulette style and just picks one of the three that you have uh, voted and, on. And I think time seems to be like a constant, but I don't know if the other ones like in the different levels um, change. But it's like, yeah, like try to beat the level under a certain amount of time. Um, I can't remember offhand we, what are some of the yeah, other ones Yeah, we, we did one that was Protect the Orb, um, yeah. which like it, we were carrying around. Did we beat that one or did we? We did beat that one. That was the one, one we beat. beat. Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so just where like you're carrying around another object and everyone has to stay like within a certain distance of that object. So it's just like a, a one more sort of like obstacle as, as you're making your way through uh, these areas that you have been through before yeah Yeah. so definitely improves what i would imagine is like replayability because after we got done like i was sad to end when we ended today i wish we could have kept going and i could imagine a scenario where it would be great to like jump back in and try to keep doing like the challenge ones to get really good at the game yeah yeah i mean and that was something i was gonna bring up later but like do we a do we want to do this again like set another date to do another like in-person thing and or this can be an either or scenario. Do we try to just like hop online sometime and like play it together that way? Oh, and do, I do mean, it through like Discord, do chat through like yeah, Discord we could do or chat something? through Discord yeah. or you know whatever. There are a million different ways to. Uh, t- we have telephones. <laughs> we could be the first people I know who beat this game. <laughs> <laughs> we're so close. I feel like we're so. We're close. not that close, man. Uh, <laughs> three more, three more worlds. Three more yeah. worlds. And then there's a secret ninth world that, uh, or like an added ninth world. Oh, they did add that. Too. That's yeah. right. That's right. Which is cool that they added that. I don't. I think that was added content, right? I don't think that was there before. I mean, I, I had to download. Like, I had to download something. Yeah, right? you had to download a, a pretty hefty update. The version of the game that we were playing on right now, and the reason I know this is that it, it made us verify that we we're all playing the, the same version number is 2.1.0. So you know that two point means that like this is after a. a kind of big-ish update so yeah that, it must have been yeah um a, a world that came to the game later um but i mean like specifically to work on and like i i hate to use the word but like to kind of grind out the challenges yeah where you're just like okay uh tonight we are figuring out a way to beat this uh this section of the game in a minute and a half yeah it sounds like fun it does sound like fun. How yeah. do we strategize that? Because you know, it's like, you know, when we know what's coming up ahead, it can be like, oh, in this room, like, oh, like, like Mark's going to do this thing, and I'm going to yeah. do this thing, and I'm going to yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah. Even with dealing with enemies, we were doing that in the main story, like in the main missions. It was like, oh, like, uh, you guys have hammers, and I don't have a hammer, so I'm going to, like, be going and, like, turn these guys to stone, and you smash them when I turn them to stone. Like, that kind of stuff. I love that planning, you know? Yeah, and that was a fun thing about the bosses, because I feel like, generally zelda bosses are apparent what you're supposed to do but there were a few in here where we were like not entirely sure yeah and some of it is because there's the different variables of weapons and the variable of height 
where like from that per- the you know like kind of over the head perspective of a link between worlds um th- th- enemies will be or like puzzles switches and stuff like that will be at there's like three different potential layers yeah. they can be yeah. on and there was occasion where normally i think we were all playing with the 3d off but there were times where it was super helpful to have the 3d on because it gave you that perspective to be like oh like i need the three of us need to be on top of each other or just two people do um and that yeah. like changes a lot i know it feels like a an- Maybe an obvious statement, but it is remarkable how well the 3D effect on the 3DS is at communicating depth. Yeah. And I understand that's what it does. Like, that is the (laughs) thing that makes it different. But, like, you know, we interact with so many 2D images that we perceive depth in it pretty well, right? Like, we, we know... When we're playing a, a, a game on on Switch, we know how far Mario is away from the thing that he's jumping to. Like, right? We we have we have right. a pretty good idea. Right. Um, and in this, every now and then, like, we really couldn't just like uh, divine it. We had to like genuinely turn on the 3D. Um, and then there was a, like we, we would all in the room be like, oh, okay, all right, no, I see it now. <laughs> like in unison. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and like, I'm not normally like a big booster for the the 3D on on the 3DS. Like, I think it's fun sometimes to turn it on for like, um, Kid Icarus Uprising or um, Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I I can take it or leave it. The ability to switch into it and then like, you know, like turn it off when I wasn't actively using it in this made this game feel like so much m- and so much more in like a unique thing. Yeah. Yeah. And the depth, the like, I, you know, t- adding to the the depth perception of it all, like there were some like moments that I was like, I'd never seen something like that in a Zelda game, like when we were running up the stairs in the fort area, yeah, yeah. Or, or like that boss battle with this ice snake. The ice snake was like my favorite. Oh, dude, boss battle of yeah. all. I think one of my top tier Zelda boss battles. It was awesome, and the way it changed the camera view was so cool. Yeah, let's talk about this boss a little bit, just because it was it was so much fun. Yeah. Um. I, and g- genuinely, this like ice snake thing is like goes in my pantheon of like great Zelda boss battles. Um. And it's it starts with like a like you said, Matt, the the camera sort of like dropping low. Yeah. Um. So that instead of having like a bird's eye view, it's sort of like an over the shoulder. Um. And the snake appears from you know one of five different caves and sort of like rushes out at you and has this. Do we think it's a helmet? Do I we think, think it's, it's a helmet? A, you think it's a helmet? I think it's a yeah. metal helmet. You don't think you're like bashing its exoskeleton? No, I think it fashioned a helmet for itself. Okay, okay, somehow. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it's a resident of Hytopia as well. <laughs> yeah. It can go. Okay, that's fair. They have their own fashion, the bad guys. You yeah, know? that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so you have to bash its helmet with hammers, and only two of your players have hammers. The other yeah. has the fire glove. Um, and then, like halfway through the fight, uh, the camera returns to its like original position above the links. Um, and you have to, like, stop the snake from hitting you with its icy tail um, by flattening it out uh, with the hammer so that the other players can bash its helmet off and slash at its head with the with the sword. And it's chaotic, and it's super fun, and, like, I don't know, it's a scary kind of... Because it gets you, like, trapped in its little coil. Yeah. And you know that it's going to hit you with its tail. And you only have so much stamina. Like, I, I, I don't think we mentioned that with each uh, item. Yeah. It's not... There's no ammunition, uh, and there's no, you know, and it's 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 not like necessarily it's like a mag- a stamina bar, right? So every yeah. every single item you have an X amount of uses out of it until it has to recharge a little bit. Um, so there was times in that fight where it's like I would be flattening this snake, and it's like I'm out of juice, yeah. <laughs> like it's getting me, I'm trapped. <laughs> oh no, I can't get out, <laughs> Patrick! You gotta smash it. <laughs> and it's like, oh no, it's like it's its head is elevated, so you like I'll smash. I got stamina. You guys gotta like carry each other and stab its head. It's just so fun. But then also I'm, I think I'm like, how would I do this online? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How would I do this online, man? You, I mean, I, I think there's probably an argument to be made for like if you have played this already with friends yeah and then you can like hop online and hope that you encounter other people who have also played it already and who are just trying to like grind out the challenges or whatever yeah uh, and already know how to do it um and just like recognize like oh i'm in this role at this point i think i'm gonna go tonight and probably play online because i feel like if like and hear me out. I just think that when I when we first played it, I'll hear everyone, you out, man. I will. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> everyone who was playing it when it first came out, it was like 
a, like everyone was playing it, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's there's people who are competent, people who are incompetent, and it only takes one person who is not able to perform or is just trolling that the whole thing derails. It literally takes all three. You cannot do it without th- yeah. a third person. Um, but I think now. If anyone, whoever's playing it now oh, yeah. is probably taking it pretty seriously. It's going to be a self-selecting group for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's also going to be like, you know, the little brothers who uh, don't have access to the Switch. Oh, you know that's I mean? true. Like, there's going to be... A, Maybe. There's going to be a lot of, like, hand-me-down audiences. And not to trash the hand-me-down <laughs> audience, but I, I like I, I don't know if you ever get to a point where um, the in, in any multiplayer scene where it has been totally self-selected out to yeah. just be the people who, like, want to play the game and take it seriously. Well, the other option that the game Seriously. does give you mm-hmm. is to play solo. It does. Which, Matt, uh, you were checking it out just a little bit because yeah. we were just curious, like, how does it work? Oh, terribly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I remember, because I couldn't remember. I remember trying it when, I was, when it first came out, but yeah. I'm like, I don't, there's a reason why I don't remember it because I never really did it. Uh, but it's, it's pretty horrendous. And how it works is I thought that the other two would become animate and, like, run around and you can, like, switch between them as the AI tries to do their own thing that, you know, mm, uh, yeah, but sure. it doesn't do that. No, it's, they, they are still dolls. Yeah. They're yeah. dolls. Yeah. Who are just there and you can use, you, you possess them. And it's like, they each have their own abilities. If there's like, you know, two hammers and one, you know, a fire glove, like you, you have to distribute that and just switch between them all as yourself. It's, and at the pace that you need to play this game and for some of these later not just boss fights but just like levels it's the fast pace there's no way yeah. someone could do it the only i guess the only caveat is that uh you don't take the two dolls don't take damage yeah um so it's only the one that you're actively moving that would take damage but still like it is it almost i would say it's it, it's possible to beat the game but it is incredibly tedious and, and challenging i don't recommend it at all yeah well and like i just think about how even when the three of us are playing and it's like i know that in this one mark is red i'm green matt's blue i've got the boomerang mark has the uh um the gust jar matt has the the uh the grippy shot yeah um even in a scenario like that i will lose track of who has what and who is who so I can't imagine, like, doing that with controlling my, all three characters yeah. um, is, is got to be a, t- a total, like, it, it seems It's impossible. also yeah. in, uh, using the, you have to use the, the stylus. It's a tap to uh, switch. There's no button to switch. Right, it's not right, like right. L and R or whatever. It's just, you have to physically tap the bottom screen to switch, which in a, fa- it's just, ugh. I, I feel like I want to search out, like, somebody on YouTube who's, like, really good at this game solo. Oh, man. Just to see how it's done. Yeah. To see, like, an expert, you know, like. Uh, play through it. I mean, I would like to see an expert trio play through it as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, th- I, th- I think that would be really fun and cool. The game does seem like it has all these opportunities to show off like gameplay virtu- virtuosity, right? Absolutely. And like expertise to like knowing exactly uh, where and how to like deploy stuff. You know, we were talking a little bit about how um, for puzzles and uh, bosses that you have to like stack the links on top of each other and really be aware of like the height of things. Um, but it's cool how much that is like a, a core tenant of the game um, that it's not just like every now and then you'll realize, Oh, we need to be, we need to be a little bit higher or whatever. Um, basically every switch you see, every enemy you fight, you have to consider like where you are in like the three dimensional plane in order to get anything done. It's just, it's just another cool thing to have to, yeah. Contend with. Honestly, like I I was I, like together, I had a really good time. Yeah. yeah. The game is so really fun. fun. It's, it's a really good game. Like if you are have the opportunity to play with three people, it's insanely gratifying. Yeah. Yep. Um I want to talk a little bit about the uh the last boss or last collection of bosses that we fought <laughs> um in at the end of World Five. Uh huh. Oh my god. Um because they are repeats basically of uh bosses from worlds like one, two, two and three. Because four no, was... two, two, right? Because one was the like blob thing, right? Uh, no, that was the halfway boss. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um so yeah, so uh yeah, you're right. One, two, and three. Yeah, maybe because okay. the four was the uh, ice snake. Yes, that's right. Very yeah. good, Matt. Um so the it's this it's three bosses that you fought before and they're like a more difficult version of of themselves um but you have totally different items than you used to fight it originally um 
which is like just the perfect amount of like mind bending because like you figured it out in the first place so you're like oh, okay i got it and then you're like oh no one has bombs how do we how do we fight this thing if no one has bombs yeah and you have to like start from square one it's amazing and then not just that but it's like it's back to back and they're they're amplified yeah. yes. they are stronger and have abilities that they did not have before like they're still like the moves that are similar but like for example uh um, there's no ed- there's no borders. So, like the first spinny top guy right. was like pr- like charge you to knock you off the stage, and the eyeball guy with th- four balls floating had like fire and ice balls. That was, yeah, they, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right. in a, in that was that was a very stressful fight because you had to do three in a row, three in a row. Yeah, it's interesting how much of the game is like uh presents you with an experience and then immediately presents you with like a remix of the same experience. Um, both in terms of like the challenges and in terms of like this boss that is the three bosses you fought already. Um, you know, and we played the game for maybe like five, five and a half hours today uh, and to already encounter like a boss that is like a remix of previous bosses. It feels very, it's a tight experience, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, doesn't feel like there's a ton of fat on this other than of course the sort of whack economy. Right. But even then, like I didn't feel every time that we chose to go back to like the stores to buy new stuff, there was for the most part, at least one that I could buy every time. Yeah. So sure. Like, I mean, I do think that they meter out, you know, like the costumes fairly slowly. So you can't just, you know, like blow it out. But I also, but I never felt like I wasn't making progress that I didn't like get a new costume. And how we did it is we would go through a full world, like world, uh, World three, world four, whatever. We did the full thing um, and completed that circuit, right? And then we'd, we'd back out and go spend our spoils. And how it t- seemed to work is the ones that upgrade the weapons that you would find within those worlds, uh, you would, when you beat it, you would ha- you'd have enough material to upgrade the suit that would upgrade the weapon you found in that world. Right, right. Or like the, the appropriate uh yes. I- items yeah for, so for we did world. like the lava world and then we could then we had enough stuff to do the Goron suit. Yeah. And, like, that kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Which can be sort of a bummer, but then I think that also makes it so it's even possible for you to attempt the, the to challenges. go back. Yeah. 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 Exactly. In that way I think it is to try to like encourage you to replay it because you know, it's like, oh, now I can do this so much easier because I don't have to worry about falling into the lava. And there's definitely some suits that you have to grind for. Like, you know, we were making progress and stuff, but for sure, you know, you would have to go back and do the challenges to get these rare materials to get yeah. these really cool suits. Um, but also there is a, a marketplace you can buy stuff at, with material at, but that changes daily, like real time daily, um, which is cool. But I was also kind of like, man, like, it's so hard to get everyone together. Yeah. Like, I wish it would just change, like, maybe after, like, a world completion or something, you know? I, I think that is, like, the kind of the, um, the That's ballot. the, like, destiny-ness of yes, it, Yes, right? it yeah. is, totally. And it feels, like, a little bit out of, just a tiny bit out of place in this experience, only because it's hard for me to imagine a scenario where I am able to come back to it, like, every day. I mean, I, I suppose I could, even if I wasn't, like, playing the challenges, I could still check in, like you do with a mobile game, and yeah, just, sure. like, collect the rewards. But, um, yeah, I just wish that my, like, life circumstances, I wish I was still in college or something where I could just, like, hang out with my friends and play this every day. Well, I'm honestly, what I think it comes, and we've said this when talking about uh, this game or Zelda game sort of abstractly uh, on, on previous episodes, but, like, if it were on a platform that I was engaging with every day and which had, like, a strong functional online and I knew there were a bunch of other people also uh, playing with it every day, um, that it would be so much more useful. If I could check in on this on my Switch every day mm-hmm. um, yeah. and, like, have an immediate view of, like, who's on uh, or even, like, who's playing other stuff on their Switch and, like, I, that I could invite over to play, you know, just a couple matches of, of Triforce Heroes. Um, like, that sounds incredible. And it, it, the, the ability to, like, again, we had to plan this. We had to reschedule it. We had to get snacks and, like, <laughs> I mean, right? Like, this, it, pulling this off, this was an amazing day, but it was work to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if, if that work part of it was just, like, pulled out and we were just signing on and playing uh, a 2D Zelda game together... Uh, that that to me feels like the perfect gaming slash friendship experience. Oh yeah, I'm not going to complain if a sequel ends up on Switch or a port, a straight <laughs> port. I mean, you know, 
uh, Gretzko's working on. Uh, there's there's rumor of like an Gretzko's untitled. working on something else. That's the rumor. There's, mm. there's like a job listing or something. So who knows? Who knows? I'd love it. They just you know the last one they did was uh link uh to the past. No no sorry. Link's awakening. Sorry, Link's awakening. Excuse me. Link's awakening. Yeah, which was you, great. Yeah, I loved it. It was cute. Do you think having now played or for me I guess it was the first time playing Triforce Heroes. Do you think at some point we need to explore Federation forces? Yes, actually, I do. Um, <laughs> so Metroid Prime Federation forces is, you know, a hugely maligned game. Uh, I think because it is a Metroid Prime game in name and basically nothing else. Yeah. And yeah. Th- that it is not. I, I think it got punished for being the crime of not being Metroid 4. Yes. Metroid Prime 4. Right. Or even like another Metroid Prime. Like, <laughs> It could it could have been anything else. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Do we need to put a squad together and play that? And again, it's the same like three person squad. Matt, what do you think? I mean, I've never played that game. Yeah, me neither. And yeah. I'd be so down to. I love this. I love this <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because it's not um, the if okay. I'm trying to do a, an analogy on the fly here. If Triforce Heroes is multiplayer link between worlds, what is Federation Forces the multiplayer version of? Just original M- Metroid Prime? Is it like an elaboration on Metroid Prime Hunters? That's my question. Because yeah. like, I did play a lot of Hunters, mm. um, and Hunters is busted basically uh because of the lack of any sort of analog stick on the original ds um and just having to like tap it and you know it's got the uh the kid Icarus uprising problem um so yeah i don't know if it's an elaboration on that then i'm not sure how interested i am but if it is just like metroid prime but in th- i don't know I, I i do not know yeah the other question i had was I played Four Swords Adventure on like the GBA when yes. it came when it was part of um, uh, Link to the Past, and then like when they uh, for a short time had it available just for like download separately on the Nintendo 3DS, and then but I never played the GameCube version, and I'm just trying to like kind of remember the difference between the experience of Triforce Heroes and Four Swords Adventure because they are similar ideas like right. four person. Zelda multiplayer Zelda in like a dungeon environment, and yet I think having Triforce Heroes be in more like 3D really significantly changes the experience. Because I think that like the puzzles that you're able to like do, yeah, it's like uh, and the combat that you're able to do is just like so different and more dynamic than being really kind of like having to uh have a lot of fidelity to that like link to the past um perspective. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, yeah, it's the the 3D ness is very interesting, um, and it means that all of the puzzle solving is based on a very small handful of of abilities, and then everything else is just based on like situational awareness. Like you just need to know where you are on the map and where your objective is, um, and having that like third dimension very clearly articulated in there um, is a big part of what makes that so engaging and so yeah. fun and I, the the game just feel it flowed really s- smooth i thought yeah, yeah. like it, the the pace was really engaging and it, it, didn't, it didn't drag i didn't find any moment where it dragged uh and we explored like the heck out of each area like yeah. we left no no possible corner we could throw someone on <laughs> un, unthrown you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's also helpful that you don't have to like be clustered in the same area like it's not yeah. like a new super mario brothers situation a great point where you have to be in the same part of the screen and if you're not then like it's gonna bubble you to where everybody else is yeah like if you can make forward progress there's nothing stopping you from doing it like your perspective will just follow your character as far as you can go and so um uh, that that I feel like helps make it easier because everybody you're not constantly being like forced into a yeah. new area like you're able to re- keep your context and you're able to uh, what I liked about that too is like we could we would each like maybe get ahead uh, but you can tap on another character on your on, with your stylus and you can see their point of view 
and you can see their yeah, camera. And I was like, oh, like, like, what's Patrick doing? It's like, oh, and then it's like, oh, actually, dude, there's something up here. Like, maybe you got to come over here, you know, because I'm ahead. Or it was just, I thought it was just really, really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's again, another, like, cute thing that, it, like, the text on the bottom screen is just like, uh, Mark is curious about Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, which is uh, funny in the room, but I imagine if you're playing over uh, distance or over the internet, just to know that like someone is looking at you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They, they, there's something like helpful about that to be like, oh, they're waiting for some sort of cue from me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or like yeah. trying to get some information about where I am or whatever. Yeah. I would have been like, oh, this person hates me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this person's so mad at me. <laughs> they keep checking. They're so curious. <laughs> um. Okay. We played through five five worlds: the grasslands, the river uh, river bed, river edge. I don't know exactly what it is. The riverlands, um, the volcano, the icy area, and the fortress. What were your favorite? Which which, which was your favorite of the five worlds that we played through? Oh, well, my favorite. Yeah, I, um, I don't know if I have because I think I think I definitely know my favorite boss, but I wouldn't say the ice area is my favorite. So. The, the ice snake was my favorite boss, but I think my favorite area, ah, I think I really liked, I know I did not like the volcano. I think I liked the, uh, the water one surprisingly. And I usually don't like water areas. Mm-hmm. And I think we talked about this before playing it. It's just, there was something about it that felt really nice. And it was, a, it was a different, it was just felt really good to play a water area that wasn't so aggravating and it was really cool to play with the water rod and stuff. Yeah, and you're surprisingly mobile in the water. Yeah, yeah which, which is, is so rare, yeah. you know? So I, I, I really dug that a lot. Mark? For me, probably, I was surprised at how much I liked the ice level. I don't know that I would necessarily say it was my favorite, but I really liked it. Normally, I hate ice levels yeah the slipperiness yeah Yeah. and but i think the fact that it was there were areas where it was like really slippery it let me start all over by saying that my favorite parts of playing this game were the moments where like the three of us were a little bit stressed out yes and the ice levels really facilitated that because you're slipping around plus a lot of the sections are like cracking if you're standing on them too long and so it was a lot of like everybody being hyper aware being like i need you to pick me up or like you know we need to keep moving we need to keep moving yeah yeah and so that was really fun because my favorite moment in playing it all was the end of uh this this boss at the or like series of bosses at the end of the fifth world because again it was so like um beating it by the skin of our teeth you know we were out of lives we were on low on hearts and it's like we just needed one or two more hits and it felt so chaotic and frantic and like yeah. j- just the perfect amount of like uh s- like stress is not the right word but like um Ten- tension yeah, yeah yeah that you like want in a game like this yeah i i, I got to agree that for for me the the ice level was was my favorite also just kind of like visually it had enough like variety to it and just like the sort of like light blue nature of it like felt very engaging i also really liked the the first like the forest level um even though it's a little bit more on the simple side and there it's amazing how many of the levels are like everyone gets arrows um but there's something just like kind of freeing and natural about like yeah we're all links with bows and arrows and like it it feels very like Call to adventure. Yes, like, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. This is the beginning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. to your point, like, even though there are only eight weapons, I was really surprised that the variety of, like, puzzles and every, like, level yeah. introduces, like, something new. Like, I never felt like um, we would hit a puzzle and be like, I can't believe we're doing this again. The like, discovery. I never felt bored. Right. And yeah. the discovery of what yeah. you could do with the weapon. Like, when like when we discovered, oh, the boomerang can carry someone. Or there's a, there's a puzzle in the water area where you're on, like, a raft and you're grappling on. You're moving the raft by grappling to areas and pulling the raft and you towards it. And there was a part like, what do we do? And then, and Pat, I think it was either Mark or Patrick, one of you was like, oh, try grappling me. I'm like, what? And I grappled <laughs> him and I pulled the raft. I was like, oh, my God. Like, what? Like, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, the game just feels so inventive. And there are so many of those moments of, like, discovery where you you feel like you're figuring it out and it's just it just makes right. it so satisfying to play even yeah. though the game knows the tools that you have <laughs> like it's you were meant to figure it out but it still feels like a like a discovery well and it was fun when we would be playing and it, like we would solve something and like matt or somebody would be like um i don't think we were supposed to do it that way it had that like breath of the wild <laughs> yeah. sense to it where yeah. it's like well it doesn't really matter if we did it the quote unquote right way yeah because the game puts really like clear parameters like 
Uh, I'm sure there are ways to break the game, but it also seems like there's multiple ways for you to solve different puzzles. Yeah, yeah, truly, and especially with the outfits that like augment the uh, the abilities. Like I, I think the the puzzle that you're referring to, where you're like, should we have? Is that the way we're supposed to do it? Uh, we were able to do it that way because we had the Kokiri suit, and so we were shooting three arrows instead of one. Yeah. yeah. Um. And yeah, that that's just rad because it's also a thing where you're like, I don't know if we were supposed to do it that way, but that's a suit that I earned. So like I I earned the ability to like shortcut my way through that puzzle. Yeah. yeah. The there were two areas I went back um into to see what the two areas that we unlocked after we beat the Ooh, world. All right. And they both we showed up. Two. Okay. They both they both showed. You could choose which one to do next. Uh there's a desert world, classic. Classic right. desert world. I'm not a fan of desert world. I don't like desert world. Uh but the other one, I was like, "Ooh, that one would probably be my favorite. Uh, and that one was, it's like a, it looked like a haunted house world or something. Oh, man. Um, and it wasn't like, Oh like, no, I, I think I heard you guys say this when I uh, went to the bathroom, dunes and ruins. It was the ruins. That's <laughs> right. I was like, dunes and ruins. <laughs> <laughs> but the ruins look so, I even went into a world and, uh, it just felt more like spooky haunted. I know Zelda, yeah, yeah. I felt like, like, I don't know, like it reminded me of, like Mario land. Like there's a vibe to it that didn't feel like the traditional, sense of dread and horror that a Zelda spooky area yeah. has. <laughs> and That's that fun. that would have been I think that one might have been my favorite one, uh, if we got to it. But Yeah. I mean it's it's also just uh cool as you unlock new areas that then you start unlocking new outfits too. Yeah. And like just scrolling through them being like, oh man, I can't wait to get like the ninja gi or the serpent toga or like you know, whatever. Yeah. Um the, it seems like there are so many fun outfits to put Link into. Because it's fun to dress him up, just like it was fun to dress up Mario, and I think we, we need love to rank it. the outfits at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just to like use those new abilities, using the bomb suit and throwing like a bigger bomb. Yeah, it's such a simple thing, but it's so rewarding to throw a big dumb bomb. Yeah. <laughs> But it is, like, because the whole game doesn't take itself that seriously, yeah. they can do stuff like, oh, there's, like, a ninja gi, and yeah. it's just, it, like, you know. There's, like, a like a Power Ranger suit, <laughs> Yeah, you know? yeah, like, like, they can do stuff like that, and it just feels a piece of the whole thing. Yeah, and there's even a, I, 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 the one I wanted, and it's going to take a lot of work, I want the Lineback one, because Lineback is such a great character. I love Lineback from uh, Phantom Hourglass. Yep. I think he's great, and you could dress up, you could dress Link up as Lineback. As you should. Uh, and when you do that, you can see what treasures are in the treasure boxes at the end of the level. So, like, you can oh. make sure that you're picking the, the rare you, one. Oh, that's You can fun. try. Yeah. Anyway, right? yeah. People that's will fun. see you heading for it. <laughs> <laughs> I love and try to that. cut you off at the pass. <laughs> what a fun little, like, trolley party quirk thing. Yeah. And a perfect move for Linebeck. Like, that. that's so what he would do. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. He's the Jack Sparrow of the Zelda world, you know? Yeah, I think of him as like a Han Solo, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Where like, you can't trust him, but you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we did, we did favorite world that we played so far, uh, favorite weapon, and then we'll do favorite outfit, and then we'll probably bounce. Cool. Uh, we'll go uh, reverse order for favorite weapon. Um, I really liked the... Um, uh, the boomerang. Boomerang was very fun and cool for me. Uh, I, I liked to have. I mean, I like the boomerang in any Zelda game. Uh, if I only have like one sub weapon and like swinging the sword around, give me that boomerang so I can stun a bad guy and then like slash him up. Yeah, I think I also. Is this reverse order? I don't go, know what go the order for it. Is. Yeah, I can't it, remember. It, it does. It doesn't matter. Next time we start with Mark. <laughs> oh, tight, 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 tight. Right, right. Uh, I also love the boomerang. I thought yeah. the boomerang was so cool. You could th like catch people onto it and bring them to you. Yeah, catch uh, bombs. It just, and, yeah, it yeah. was so. It was like, I think it was the most had the most utility. You mm -hmm. know, it, it was really useful. Um, but I, I have to agree. And then the bigger, cause you upgrade, it's a bigger boomerang. Oh my God. And, and it's, carry like, two it's like scarier too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a little skull in the middle of it. Yeah. I also love the boomerang. That one was sick. I really liked the hammer and I liked <laughs> that the, uh, I like that the hammer is probably, um, I shouldn't say I liked the hammer. I felt like it was w probably the most difficult weapon to use. Yeah, totally. But I liked that uh, in like the that snake boss fight, the ice snake that we yeah. liked so much. Like I liked um, how it's so powerful, but in that boss fight, you feel underpowered when you have it. Yes. Yeah, like you feel outmatched. Yeah, with um, uh, by that snake with the hammer. 
It's also cool that like they take the premise of the hammer like seriously and that like you can both uh, smash something hard and flatten the soft body of the yeah, snake, right? Like, yeah. That discovery was really cool because oh, at first so we fun. were just attacking the back of the snake because yeah, like, there's, a, there's an ice this? shell. Yeah. Like, oh, we got to like hit. And then like when I fly, I'm like, it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially because that's such like a Zelda like boss thing where it's like, oh, the tail, yeah. you know, is like glowing or it's ice. And so oh, I'll just use my fire to like hit it. Doesn't work. Yeah. Didn't work in this. You had right. to find, you had to figure out what like the hook was. Uh, and then favorite outfit, Mark, I'm sorry. I know you just answered, but we have to start with you. I, for me, uh, the one I loved the most that I earned was the tingle tights, even though it didn't have the most utility. Um, again, w- what it did is if you fell off a ledge, it, you could recover without losing a heart and you could do that three times per like level. Um, but man, uh, I love my boy tingle. Excuse me, I love my man, Tingle. There you go. And yeah. um, uh, That's right, he's 35 years old. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, Tingle representation is super important to me <laughs> in games. And so uh, I was happy to see Tingle tights. Um, I enjoy- there, there were two outfits that I enjoyed that I didn't use that much. Um, uh, one is the cozy parka. I thought it was really funny that he looked like he was one of the ice climbers. Because uh, it's just, you know, he's got that... Yeah. For a lined hood. Um, but I also really enjoyed the Goron costume. Um, the Goron garb is what it's called. Uh, because it allows you to swim in the lava. Um, and there was one of these uh, like r- rooms that we were in where the item I had didn't have like an immediate utility for what the two of you were doing. And you had other items that were useful. But I could hop into the lava and like swim around and be like, oh, it's, it's over here. Like... It it allowed me to interact with the environment in a way that no one else could. Um, not just like increasing some ability, but like yeah, swim in a place you couldn't normally swim uh, is just like a cool like unlockable. And also, who doesn't love a Goron? Yeah, yeah. it gives him like the it gives Link the body type of a Goron, so he has like a big belly. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's really funny. Yeah. And then I think for me, I, the one for utility, especially with the three having to share the hearts, I found the lucky suit. I think it was called. It was like the clown looking one. Um, was it the lucky suit? Yeah, lucky yeah. loungewear. Or something yeah, the like lucky that? loungewear. I found that to be extremely useful. Um, and what that did is every time you would not every time, but uh, it would f- uh, frequently whenever you would get hit wearing that suit, it would say lucky and it wouldn't deal damage. And in like pinch situations, I found that really crucial um so i thought the utility on that was really great i think my favorite um costume was i actually i mean it's pretty classic but i like the kokiri one oh yeah uh, a lot i think it's really not only does it look he looks super cool uh you know it's it's classic green kind of tunic vibe yeah but it also i thought the man like in terms of the upgrades i found the arrow upgrade to be the the most at least for me the most um uh, a powerful or, or yeah, or like the most useful, the most right? useful because you can shoot three arrows at once that were going to like in like a spread, um, like a triangle spread, and it just it really came in clutch when we needed it. So I really like that yeah. one a lot. Yeah, yeah, really good for like uh, tripping switches with yes. uh, with the arrows, like uh, especially when we were trying to do one of those things in like in the time limit. Yeah, um, where you're just like I don't know, fire off in that direction and hope you hit it. Yeah, and then you do because you're shooting three arrows. There is the endeavor looking one, but I don't know what it does. We didn't unlock it. But I know it there, looks like endeavor from there, My there, Hero Academia. There's <laughs> a lot of like cool looking ones that we didn't like that we haven't unlocked. Yet. Yeah, we had to earn that. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I'm I'm very much into that. You know, we mentioned this uh, this ninja gi. Obviously, I, I want that. There's one that's called Robo Wear. You look like a robot. Um, the Serpent's Toga, another one that we mentioned. Um, yeah, there's there's a bunch of cool and dumb looking uh, things here. Some of them uh, require you to spend friendly tokens, which are uh, when you play with people who you are friends with, I, I believe that's how you get a friendly token. Yeah, I mean, I we walked outside and we got it from this guy in front of the castle who said that because I played with Mark and Patrick, here's a friendly token. I, I, I don't know if it's friend specific yeah, or if it's anyone. That's what I wasn't sure either. Like, I don't know if it, they have to be like friends with you on the Nintendo 3DS or if it's just you played with someone online and it's encouraging you to play with 15 different someones. Okay, here we go. Following the 2.0.0 update, friendly tokens became available from the street merchant after the curse on Princess Styla has been lifted. At Oh, so you can also buy them oh. um, a- after you uh, beat the game. Um, friendly tokens are materials used to make the timeless tunic and the tri-suit tri- outfits. Blah, blah, blah. Uh... 
with other players and completing at least one level. Okay, so you just had to complete a level with another player. It could be anyone. It doesn't have to be a friend specific. I I don't I don't I don't think it has to be a friend. But why didn't we have them already then? Because it was two point right? Yeah, it was updated. No, that says prior to the two point update. Oh, prior. Oh, oh, I don't know. Why didn't we I have guess that? we'll. No, we didn't do enough research on this one before we started talking about it. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, so I, I think it's safe to say that we all had a great time with this game. Absolutely would recommend, with the caveat that you have to have two friends to play it with. But have a Triforce Hero Party. I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah, it was great. I got dropped off M-Game, picked up at 7 p.m. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, and because we are nearing 7 p.m., uh, let's close this out. All right, that is just about going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Matt, thank you so much yeah, for joining us. Yeah, thank you us. for being here. It's so nice to see you guys and do this in person and geek out about Nintendo. I don't get to do it enough, so it's always a treat. Yeah, thank you. well, and we love having you on. Um, Ma- Matt, is there anything that you would like to plug at this time? Yes, I would love to plug my... I'm, I play a Krogan named Vogue Kirk in the Mass Effect Adventum tabletop RPG called... Or called Mass Effect Ventum. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, so check out Mass Effect Ventum. Uh, you don't have to have played Mass Effect to listen to it. If you're looking for a new immersive story to get yourself lost in, uh, it's really, really fun. We've had like some great guests on, including the guy who voices a commander, male Commander Shepard. Mark Mears been on, and we had Joven Shire from Smosh Games come on and guest. Uh, it's it's a really good time. So if you want to uh, looking for like a narrative podcast, check out Mass Effect Ventum. Yeah. Um, and uh, previous guest on this show, uh, Kelly Nugent, has been uh, guesting on there a little bit, too. That's right. That's right. And Emily Rose Jacobson. I don't know if... She's uh, also been on this show. That's yes. right. Yeah. Uh, so she's also on that as well. And she's great. They're both really great. So come to listen to them. Uh, and where can people find the show? On any podcasting platform, which if you if you also give it five stars, you might find it. You might not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We will find out someday if that works. We're, we're going to take this tour of Apple. <laughs> we're going to find out. Put on a, a you know a trench coat and like a hat, like right. We'll stack the three of us. Yeah, uh, we'll just be a, a we'll be a really twenty foot man exactly. And the the, the tour guy is going to be very explicit. Nobody leave this group. <laughs> <laughs> we just wander away. <laughs> What's the bathroom? <laughs> uh, we that that makes us uh what uh Doctor Dork Tower. Like the Goomba Tower? That's yes, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Remember he was a doctor? <laughs> Dr. Goomba Tower? Oh, he's had more education than me, for sure. That's true. Do you think all three of them had to go to medical school? I do. I actually, I do. I think, I do. I think all three had to go to medical school. Please remember to rate, review, and follow us on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you share stuff. We appreciate it when you do that. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at uh patrick underscore ellers mark is at mke mitchell and the show is at nin cart society and matt is at the matt acevedo there we go check out the facebook page which is just nintendo cartridge society olivia duncan made our logo our theme music is provided by 8bitbetty you can get more of his music by going to 8bitbetty.com or by listening right now for my co-host mark mitchell this is patrick ellers saying thank you for listening Greetings, listeners of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Are you ready for a promo? Let's do yoga. Let's get fit. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Muriel. And we're the hosts of Hella in in Your your 30s. 30s. This is a podcast for people of all ages, all about navigating this dystopian world we live in (laughs) that's right so every monday we invite you into our living room or out into the world on whatever adventures we go on or into our living room for an adventure in our living room (laughs) yeah like having your wife challenge you to a great british baking show style competition in your own kitchen that's right or maybe you know you want to know what it's like to volunteer at a food bank or maybe uh, well you know you want to hear what it's like to foster kittens in the midst of a pandemic that's right super easy but giving cats medication is literally the worst thing in the world (laughs) okay anyways if you want to hang out with us find us every monday hella in your 30s wherever you get your podcast tomorrow's a new day let's order pizza